Hi, today we're going to talk about the Corel Drop uh, Power Trace feature, um, which is something that you may or may not have tried, you may or may not have liked, um, and it's basically used to vectorize a, a raster image. And normally it's something like this that obviously came originally, or you assume it came from a vector at some point, the customer found this who knows where, sent it to you and said, here's what I want to use. And you ask him for something better and he says, this is all I have, of course. And obviously you can't just use this as is, it won't print nicely. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what a, how uh, low resolution and pixelated this image is. So we can't use it like this, we're going to have to do something. Um, if you have ever tried power trace you may have just uh, gotten an image like this and gone up to trace bitmap let's pick line art and said let's see how it looks oh no that doesn't look good at all and you may have even determined that this uh, feature is useless I can't I, that's unacceptable quality that's just as bad as the if not worse than the original bitmap well, like everything else, there is a learning curve and there are ways you can improve the quality of your trace. Almost every bitmap anybody sends you is going to be RGB because that's the way they're displayed on the internet and on a computer monitor. And um, a lot of people think that's the only kind of uh, bitmap there is. you know being a graphic artist that there are different kinds of bitmaps and what I'm gonna do first of all is convert this to a monochrome bitmap so I'm gonna go up here black and white and I'm gonna increase the resolution to 200 and you can see that looks a little better already it still has this rough ragged edge here but that looks much better than the original did just by uh, increasing the resolution and converting it to a monochrome. Now that it's a monochrome I can change it to whatever I like and I'm going to select 50 percent black. I'm going to show you why I'm doing that. Go back up here and convert it to bitmap again this time to a grayscale and that's going to enable us to take the next step go back up here and I'm going to blur my grayscale like this using a, a Gaussian blur which will blur the edges as you'll see in a moment and I can choose the radius so let's uh, see what that looks like and we'll go with that now let me zoom in here and we'll look at that edge and see what we've done. Now this blur you can see has sort of blurred the indivi individual uh, pixels together so it kind of softens this line a little bit. So now if I go up here to effects, adjust, we'll get my tone curve and that'll allow me to darken the grays, darken the dark grays and lighten the light grays. I'll pick this sharp curve here I'll go way down there like that and that ought to darken that up and sharpen it up quite a bit. We'll get those lighter grays as light as we can to make that line as sharp as possible. Now that that's a nice reasonably sharp line, I'll zoom back out And now I'll go back up here to convert one more time. Remember this is still a grayscale bitmap and to get a nice solid trace I want to convert it to a monochrome, black and white. I'm going to use the anti-aliasing on this because I want that line to be as smooth as I can when I trace it. Now when I trace this image it looks quite a bit better and I can go up here with my controls this detail one often brings out a little bit more just a little bit I'm gonna keep it at that and now 
we have a reasonable redraw of that uh, original, which if you recall looks like this. And for a lot of applications that um, power trace with no uh, additional work is going gonna, is gonna to work okay for what you're using it for. Now if this is for a commercial or an ad or a, you know something something fine art or a t-shirt maybe you might want to actually go in here and start cleaning this up which would entail in the, uh, editing the individual nodes now, I'm not going to do that here but you can see there's quite a few of them so you might actually want to start taking a bunch of this out if you really want to smooth this drawing up just get rid of mass quantities of nodes at the same time we'll do this on another video um, for now we're not going to edit this too much um, as you can see it would be kind of time consuming and the result really wouldn't be in this instance a whole lot different um, the average person taking a glance at this is going to say yep yeah, looks like it to me so here's a technique uh, a couple of techniques you can use with your power trace feature so experiment with some of these uh, techniques next time you have to power trace something um, see how well you can uh, get it to reproduce. And I hope your next project goes well.